I'm excited today we're finally going to do the shop tour and show you all the stuff in the workshop. We've had a lot of people ask about it. We've been talking about doing it for a long time. We're gonna show you the different machines we have in the shop, a bunch of different accessories for them, and the different worker zones in the shop. Here we are, 900 square feet, all on slab floor with heat and air conditioning, skylights. What you're going to see today is completely raw. This is the shop as it is being used with several projects that were just done. Nothing has been cleaned, nothing has been put away. This is the current state of affairs. It is a little messy here, very messy there. So let's go take a look. It's a play shop as much as it is a workspace. It has been a long evolution. It really started out as a hobby in my parents' garage. It's comical and amazing in a way, seeing the difference going from a garage workshop full of my dad's wood everywhere where I could barely move around and then evolved to a larger workspace that we were in a few years ago and now to this. This area, as soon as you walk in, is usually where the small manual lathe lives. The shop fox lathe is being replaced by a Hardinge HLV that we recently got. And I haven't gotten rid of the shop fox yet because I haven't finished everything on the HLV. So I don't want to get rid of one that I know and love before I know that I can rely on that one. We're getting to what is really the core of the shop is these two machines. We have a Prototrack DPM bed mill and a Track 1630 lathe. These are both CNC conversational controls, but you can import G-code uh, to do whatever you need to do. A constant reminder when I walk by these, I think about how much capital it takes to acquire one of these, tool it, move it, get power to it, maintain it. It's a fairly substantial investment, but this is the core of the shop. You know, probably 80% of the work or more that comes out of here gets touched by these machines. If you know that you're gonna be doing a lot of business, that's your plan, that seems to be what's going on, then just buy new machines, I would recommend. We bought both of these used and they've worked out great. Just as an example, this lathe almost paid for itself in the first four months that we had it. If you know you're gonna use it, then I would just recommend buying new ones. If it's your garage hobby, then certainly pick up a used machine. You can get a great deal on these every now and then. We have on this side all the tooling for these machines basically. R8 tooling, hand tools, fixtures, chucks, drawers of collets, things like that. Basically these racks and these cabinets support the CNC mill and CNC lathe. We have the cold saw sitting in the aisle in the way because it doesn't have a home right now. So continuing farther down the space here, we kind of get to the end of the milling and we move into welding over here. So the welding area is a little bit of a disaster, but we just moved to this rack system that I need to organize. I like this because we can have several welders and a bunch of different tanks and stuff on a cart and we just wheel it around the shop or outside or wherever we need it. We have a welding table here that's almost completely buried in clamps and cables and hoses. It's a nice Langmire that we like. As we get to the corner over here, what I use as an assembly area for small stuff small fixtures and parts and tapping uh, little pieces and jewelry work stuff here and there. It's basically a disaster right now, but when I need to clean this off to do a project, it really takes about 20 minutes to put all the crap away. These are, you know, hardware drawers that I added to the bottom of this bench that have uh, pull-out trays and I just kind of used it as a floating shelf system here and it has a lot of the little hand tools and stuff like that. This is mostly jewelry, but it's really convenient. You can sit in the middle and then have 20 drawers next to you and then stuff on the shelves on top. You don't have to get up and go find stuff. We've got drill press. It's kind of covered with straps and stuff, but it's been a little good little drill press. And then we kind of go over here. We've got the gantry crane. This has been a great piece of equipment. If you're looking at something like this, this is the Harbor Freight uh, model and it has been excellent. No complaints about that. 
it's kind of created our rebuilding area. The machine rebuilding area has been taken up by this uh, new machine we have here is a hardened chucker lathe. It's basically ready to use. We're in the process of running uh, power to it to get it set up to use. We've got uh, the iron worker over here. We did a video on that not, look, not too long ago. It's set up at an angle so we can feed 20 foot sticks through it from outside. As we swing around, we've got a rack of 3D printers and the supplies for those. These have been a nice addition to the shop for high precision model making. Um, very quick and nice tolerance. And then we go over to the laser cutter. This one is for acrylics, plastics, wood, leather, paper, that kind of stuff. It's been a great uh, machine to learn on, been very useful for a lot of projects. Kind of broadens the scope of the shop capabilities as well. In the corner here, we've got a sandblaster in process being put back together. To the left of that, we've got surface grinder, got a Herrig 612 that's being rewired right now. Diacro benders that are we're gonna rebuild here on the floor. All these crates are tooling for the hard inch chucker. A whole bunch of goodies for that thing to go through and get set up. Maybe put that on a rack. We're looking at the Bader belt sander. We did a video on that. We've been playing around with blacksmithing a little bit. We've got a small forge here we just set up. These are the, uh, the belts for the sander. We've got a whole rack of different grits in here. I think this is a 120 inch uh, machine. We come over here, we've got one of the stock racks, one rack for basically 24 inch to six foot. What we've done recently this year is organize the stock. So if you look over here, we set up a rack of bins for smaller stock, anything up to one foot basically. And I tried to separate it as much by material, shape, type, and size. So it really makes it a lot easier to find stock that you are looking for. So we've got everything from rubbers and plastics, steel, brass, copper, cast iron, carbide, aluminum, wood, threaded rod, that kind of stuff. Uh, we used to have these in drawers that worked out pretty well, but I've noticed that having a bin where you can visually see what's in it and it has a name tag on it makes it easier and faster to find. It saves a lot of time. And I know that basically if we're looking for steel round stock that's under a foot long, uh, it's gonna be in that bin or we don't have it. The stock organizers are separated by size really. So on the rack over here, we have, like I said, 24 inches to six feet. If there's anything we need that's in that length range and it's not there, it means we don't have it. And then for super long stuff, up to 20 foot, we have on a rack in the hallways. If it's not out there, we don't have it. So it's really easy to just go where your size of material that you need should be. If it's not there, you know you have to order it. Super simple. One thing that we mentioned before is a lot of the stuff on the shop is in wheels. This is a quick little deburring, buffing, grinding station. So you have a six inch grinder. You've got a six inch buffer. We've got a grinder here with different carbide cutting uh, diamond wheels on it. And then we have this guy, which is a wire wheel with a green deburring wheel on it. So this makes it super easy to just wheel it around to whatever station you need it at. Things like vertical bandsaw, horizontal bandsaw behind it for rough stock cutting, the press, the Interpack press behind it. H press with the pneumatic uh, pump control on it, super fast and easy to control. Here we've got things like these cast iron benches. These are like old Rockwell benches. Super great for working on, nice and durable and heavy and they don't move when you're using them. This one's covered in stuff that's being put away, tooling from auctions and sales and things that we're integrating into the shop here. So ideally this would be cleaned off and it's used as a project table. You, it's always commonly cleaned off and you come up to it and set up whatever you're doing for that day. And when you're done, you clean it off. We've got a couple things here, a little portable parrot vise here, swivels, you can rotate it uh, 90 degrees. We've got a little uh, disc sander here, super handy. A drill and cutter grinder, sharpening end mills and drills. Here we have sheet metal shear. So this guy is great for chopping up uh, full sheets of material. 
up to 16 gauge, I think it is. This is the back of the racks of tooling for the milling machine and the lathe. Fixtures, you know, we've got tilting fixtures, two axis tilting vise, face plates, angle plates, vices, riser blocks, spin indexer, follow and steady rest for the lathe, tilting rotary table for the mill, various chucks. This is an interesting one I found, face mill. You can put a uh, either an HSS or a carbide insert in each one of these four holders and you can set your angle and then clamp it with the screw. It's a face mill that you can install custom tooling into and control the angle. There's always new stuff in the machining world to discover. I had actually designed one of these several years ago and just never made it because I couldn't find someone that had made something you could buy. Either that or it was crazy expensive at the time. And I picked this up for 20 bucks at a sale. What I'm thinking for this is making custom profile inserts that we can then use for machining special textures and patterns on surfaces of metal. So it's a great example of like it's never ending the different types of tooling amount you know different fixtures and shapes of cutters and ways of doing things processes in the metalworking world is pretty much endless. So looking down here, you can kind of get a peek at some of the blacksmithing stuff. We've got a couple uh, swage blocks and the anvil there. I think that's uh, Peter Wright, but it's not marked. You can see, looking at the crap on this table, all this stuff is getting put away. It's in the process of being organized. And that kind of, that stuff gets filtered into these cabinets here. I wouldn't be here doing the work that I like doing in the shop space without the help and support of several key friends over the years. They know who they are. I hope that if they ever see this, then this is one of my thank yous to you for that. This has been a huge benefit in the evolution of the shop here is making space for this. I mean, going from tiny 080 screws up to half 13s all organized by size and length has been a huge benefit in time savings and space savings wood screws rivets button heads flat heads brass screws aluminum screws nuts and washers we have a metric drawer, metric screws and uh, nuts and bolts, set screws and micro screws, dowel pins and other assembly hardware, slotted screws. And then the same idea with uh, cutting tools. We go from reamers in the top, 30 thousandths to an inch or more, and then getting into taps, metric and standard taps m2 and 080 all the way up to three quarter and then we do drills this is really where it started the organization started so we've set up a full set of drills basically ten thousandths to one inch and a little bit above and set up a bin for each one in order of decimal size so this set includes letter number fractional and metric drills We've got the chart, this is 5 sixteenths, but it's also labels 312 thousandths, which is really all that we care about. And it eliminates hunting around through several different hardware bins to find the one that's closest to the size that you want. This way you can just go up to the drawer and say, I need something between 350 and 480. You pull it out and you have everything that's available commercially in that size. Of course, with a few sections that we haven't uh, had projects for here and there. Generally, I order drills one or two at a time or based on project and then whatever extras we have or regrinds will get put back in the drawer later. You know, small end mills from 20 thousandths up to three quarter mostly for our mills. Different cuts and HSS and carbide and finishers, roughers, form tools, all that kind of stuff. Diametral pitch gear cutters, horizontal slaughters and form mills. And it kind of carries over. This is hand tools, power tools, some aluminum stock, plastic, assembly hardware, knobs and caps and hinges and bearings and covers and hooks. And then we get over into more of the finer hand tools, measuring tools, micrometers, calipers, angle and bench blocks. 
wood cutting, woodworking chisels and files, metalworking files, deburring tools and stones. They get gradually finer and finer till we get to inspection equipment here. We've got a full set of plus and minus plug gauges, 16th of an inch or 61 thousandths to one inch in each of the sets. These are kind of new. They replaced an older set that we had, so a lot of them we haven't used yet. One of my favorite go-to measuring tools for doing work on the lathe and the mill, where you need to be within a thousandth um, and you need to physically feel the fit of what you're getting. And then we have an empty one on the bottom, gauge blocks, things like that for measuring also precisely. And then as we go back over here, we've got a um, sheet metal bender. This is the Mittler Ultimate Break. This is a good match to the Diacro shear. So we can cut and bend in one station here. And then as we come back over here, we come to another workbench. This one's pretty crowded with stuff going on right now. Different uh, fixtures and tools being repaired or used. We just finished an engine project here. We've got things, you know, benchtop tools like the tapping machine, the hand Aki tapper. This guy is new, the bevel machine. This is something I'd seen a long time ago and wanted to try it out and just happened to find a good deal on one. This is a great addition to the shop. Super easy, fast way to add bevels um, on parts. Love these workbenches. It's a good height. It's super heavy duty. You can put machines on them if you want to. Any kind of work that you need to do where you need something stable, it's a great option. So we have a couple machines that are close to the entrance here that we walked by in the beginning. We've got this guy, sort of half size uh, knee mill. We did a video sort of about this that's called small milling machines, I think. But this is a great little machine, basically a small version of a bridge port. Anything you can do on a bridge port, you can almost do everything on this. And then we have a, a Nichols horizontal mill here. And this is interesting. It's like an older 1950s machine. Your hand crank for the Y is a standard crank. And then the X, it's on a rack and pinion. And you literally drive it by hand. Great little horizontal machine. Sort of in between the benchtop ones and the big mammoth horizontals that you see around a lot of the places. Very capable, productive machine. As you can see, it's cut a ton of aluminum and stainless recently. You know, there's skylights and you can work in here without the lights on if you don't need a ton of light. So I've installed diffusers on these because originally they were just open. They were crystal clear and it's nice. It's really nice. It feels good for the people working in the space, but in this situation you don't really want to have direct sunlight on things indoors because it will change the temperature of tools and make it harder to do precision work if you have this uh, laser beam of sunlight crossing your workshop affecting your tools throughout the day is not a good idea and it will also age things prematurely there's lots of rubbers and plastics and coatings and things that you don't want to have exposed to that UV light it's a great benefit to have but you do need the diffusers to make it not detrimental. You can also use the fluorescence. We did change all of these to 5000 Kelvin. And if you're gonna be installing lights or you wanna change, uh, upgrade the lights in your space, I would highly recommend the bright white. It's gonna be a much better light to work under and uh, be more comfortable for achieving success with working on stuff. Little changes are very important to productivity and how the space feels and how happy you are in the space getting work done. And here we're back uh, at the beginning, sort of my office work area table. This is a adjustable height desk. It's a kit that you can buy, an adjustable height leg kit and then you can put whatever top you want on it. You can either buy it with their top or get your own. I got this maple top and basically chose the dimensions and cut it out and finished it myself. But really what I was looking for, wanted to have an aircraft carrier desk to work on. Something big enough where I could set out an entire folder of drawings or, or you know designs and pages and be able to look at everything all at once. It ends up crowded like this with my everyday stuff, but it gives you the option to lay out everything. Uh, if you need to do something bigger. And it's height adjustable. So you have your controls here. It's in the sitting height right now. You can program whatever height you want. And then when I come over to it and I wanna work standing up at my laptop or whatever, you can just push your button and be up where you need to be to be comfortable. 
that's pretty much the shop. I think you've seen most of it. We have storage racks and shipping supplies and stuff like that here. Projects in process, stuff being getting ready to be shipped out and some maintenance stuff. So I hope that gives you a better perspective on the shop and what we have here at the time. It does tend to be cycling through. Like I said, we're getting new stuff in and new stuff out fairly consistently. And I've noticed that as we organize things, we get more space and then we end up getting another machine that takes up that space. So we kind of end up uh, perpetually with the same amount of room, but more stuff in here and I try to prioritize it by what gets used the most. A lot of people have been asking us for a quick look at, you know, what else is there. They're always watching one video and asking about that other machine in the background that we don't talk about in that particular video. Yeah, if you have any other questions about stuff or you want to know more about a particular thing you saw, let us know and we'll talk about it more.